Welcome to the Thrifted Tonight. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Alfred Ng. Instagram is testing some new features that can make it harder for hackers to steal your account and hold them for ransom. Alfred, you have the story. What's, what's this about? Yeah, so a lot of the times hackers will target, you know, Instagram accounts from influencers or anybody that has like a cool username that's only like three letters long or something like that and sell it for like pretty high prices. Um, in a report from The Atlantic uh, a few months ago, it talked about how these accounts can oftentimes sell for, you know, $100,000 or something like that. Wow. But I've also known average people that are not celebrities at all that get their Instagram accounts hacked. Um, and it's extremely hard to get it back, be most of the times because when you ask to um, you know, get your password back, they'll send it to an email address. But the problem is once somebody has your email, has your Instagram account, mm. they can change what email address it's associated with. Right. Um, and they'll at hold it for ransom sometimes. They'll say, you know, if you want your account back, uh, give us $100, $200, whatever. And is that what it goes for? Because like, obviously for a celebrity Instagram yeah. account, it's worth a lot more. But if it's just an average Joe, like... How much is it? Is it actually if it's, if it's bucks? like an average person, it's about that much. Uh, wow. You know, it varies. You know, if you have a really popular account, it could cost a lot more than that, considering right. how much influencers make from advertised posts and things like that. But what uh, Instagram is testing out is these features. So when you try to log in now, if yep. you if you can't get your password right, obviously because a, ch a hacker might have changed it, yep. um, they can. You can now ask them to send the uh, a six-digit code to your original email address, so the one that you signed up for Instagram with, uh, yeah. which is which can't really change. Right. And they can send it there, and once it goes there and you use the six-digit code to log, log back on, yep. they will log out all other uh, login sessions. So the, mm. uh, you know, the hackers on their devices, they'll be logged out, and they won't be able to get back in that way. So. Gotcha. This is something that's been coming for a long time. People have been getting hacked on Instagram for a while now, and yeah. they really haven't done much for victims, but this is uh, a good way to prevent that from happening. And how, I mean, how prevalent is this? Like, how many, how many of these, how common is it for you to actually get your account hacked and held for ransom? Well, there's no statistic on it, but last August, Instagram did acknowledge in a post um, on their own blog saying, like, we've noticed, you know, a rise in this. Mm. We've noticed more people complaining about this. But they didn't really offer a solution then. They more so just gave the standard fare of use a strong password and use two-factor authentication, right, right. which isn't really, you know, proactive on this kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, it's good to hear that Instagram's actually taking some proactive moves to, to help uh, users. Uh, next up, are you familiar with World of Warcraft or EverQuest? Quest? Uh, yeah, I used to play a lot of uh, WoW, and then right. I stopped because I had other things to do. <laughs> well, these massive online role-playing games, uh, you know, they were kind of uh, the exception, I guess. They were sort of, there were a couple of these, a handful of these games back in the day, but now it's quickly become the norm. You've got, you know, games like Anthem. Uh, you've got games like Sea of Thieves. Of course, Fortnite. These are games that, you know, expect to, to go on forever as mm -hmm. opposed to the, the annual update of a franchise using, relying on DLC, relying on um, uh, the ability to purchase digital goods or upgrades. Uh, how do you feel about that? Because I feel like this is a, this is just sort of a way to, I don't know, bleed you of your money more effectively. Yeah, I mean, they don't have to make a whole new game, and it's yeah. uh, they save money that way. Also, people get new content without having to buy a, a straight-up new game. That's Obviously, true. there's, like, subscription fees associated with that. Um, and they can just keep mi making money that way without as much of the work. Right. I mean, obviously, like all games, no matter how good they are, like will stale and they'll make like a new one eventually. Like yep. Diablo 2 was supposed to last forever also. And, and then yeah. it kind of got stale. And then they right. came out with Diablo 3, which is also really good. Same thing with Dota. Dota is a game that like lasted a really long time. And then they came out with Dota 2. I guess Destiny is a good example of that. Yeah. Right? Destiny was supposed to go on for a while. Yeah. And then, well, Destiny also didn't have the best start. Yeah. They so. all eventually get stale. What do you think, Fortnite? Is Fortnite going to get There's going to be a Fortnite 2 eventually. Like, <laughs> it, I, there's no doubt that there will be one. All right, lastly, check out our uh, latest Tech Enable feature, which gives, which gives you an inside look at a smart home custom built for a wounded veteran. It's a nice reminder that tech isn't just about the shiny new gadgets. Stuff can actually change lives in a real meaningful way. For more of these stories, check us out on CNET. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Alfred Ng. Thanks for listening. There's that company.
All right, thanks everybody for joining us for the recording of the audio podcast. You can subscribe to that using the links down in the description below. Uh, in the meantime, go ahead and send in your questions and comments because we want to floor those and keep the conversation going. Uh, interested to what you think about today's topics, uh, what were your first real experiences with massive multiplayer online role-playing games? Uh, for me, it was a very negative one with World of Warcraft when I lost a... Uh, a college roommate to it because he failed out with a point zero four in one semester. Wow. Uh, so go ahead and chime right, in with your how stories. How good is his WoW yeah, account yeah. now? He must have an epic account. I, 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 Who cares about college, better. dude? Wait, how many raids does he go on? <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, go ahead and send in questions and comments. I'm going to try to figure out why the mic seems to be doubling. I don't know By the way, I thought that story was going to end on a much more tragic note when you said you lost your roommate and then like the story continued and it ended up being okay. He just dropped down. Yeah, I thought he was gonna join. I fraternity. thought it was gonna get a lot worse. Yeah, it was Wait, just what? weird though, because like <laughs> he, um, his girlfriend like left school with him for to some reason because wow. she had like an impeccable grade point average, but she was just this like lazy lump and would sit around while he would just play WoW for like eleven hours a day. I once clocked him five days with no shower, um, so I never went home. I literally slept in my office at my college radio station. And, uh, yeah, after one semester, he was asked to just leave. They didn't give him any chance of, like, oh, you're on academic probation. They're just like, please go. Don't don't come back. I and she left with that. him, which I, was ridiculous. I had a friend drop out of high school around, like, senior year to, to be a pro uh, Smash player. The disappointing part about that story is, like, he wasn't, like, that was good. good? Uh, yeah. So, were like, you able to beat him? Yeah. Like, oh, I could beat wow. him. So I was like, I don't know why you're doing that, dude. Like, you're not. But... Maybe he's really good now. I don't. You've lost touch. Yeah, I don't. I haven't talked to him, and I don't see him like at these competitions. You know so. what? I'll give him props for pursuing his dream. Yeah. Hope he's doing well. Roger, did you ever play any MMORPGs? No. Nah, I actually try to stay offline. I mean, I used to play uh, Call of Duty a lot, but I also get it's killed. a little different. Yeah, it's totally different, and I get killed constantly, so I just stopped. But yeah, the. Uh, like wow, just what I just couldn't get into. Um, yeah, I just I had other things going on. Yep. Uh, okay, so uh, another conversation we want to have is uh, people who have experienced uh, getting their Instagrams hacked, or if they know somebody who's gotten their Instagram hacked. Uh, Landon says, "I just had a buddy who got his IG account attack uh, hacked, uh, caused him a lot of headache." Uh, we're just curious what hoops did he have to go through to get things kind of put back together how much is he back on his feet is he paranoid now um i have never had my instagram specifically hacked i don't think i did have like a bunch of random followers show up one time like that i had somehow excuse me somehow followed mm -hmm. not intentionally i've never seen anything like that before but no huh. personal data was leaked no money was lost or anything like that, that what you about know well i looked at my bank account well it doesn't mean like the data is not out there they just haven't had a chance to get to you yet. Fair enough. And so what experience have you guys had with it? Have you known anybody who's gone um, firsthand with this? My friend's, uh, my girlfriend's friend, like, had her Instagram account hacked, like, a few months ago. And she apparently had to jump through all these different hoops to get it back. Went through the normal process. And at the time, uh, Instagram gave the answer that they give a lot of people. was, mm. yeah, sorry, there's nothing we can really do. Uh, um, and then it went from that into, like, this whole thing where she had to go to like a notary to get like some note like really yeah like notarized i guess yes yep. that's um, what notary publics do yes yes and then send it to like instagram saying like hey look i am who i say i am please like give me my account back this person stole it from me they changed the handle wow. um changed the email and all this stuff so like i wouldn't even be able to find my own account wow that kind of thing um so yeah, this feature is like a long time coming. A lot of people have fallen victim to this and like not been able to get back right. or anything like that. Um, and you know, to have to jump through hoops like this to go to like uh, an office and ask them to notarize like a form, that's kind of... Yeah, that's that seems pretty excessive. Yeah. Um, and, and another motherboard story um, from Vice, they had written about how victims have turned to other hackers to like get their to account. like hack back the, yeah. the account yeah which is wow. that should wow. not be the way things are done no yeah. no no some real dirty dozen suicide squad I stuff know, going I on know, right there right uh okay um ryan says my wife is constantly getting her instagram hacked how can i prevent that um two-factor authentication is very important obviously like yeah. if you're if your account is not hacked currently like you still have access to it you should turn that on yep um obviously 
there's different uh, tiers of two-factor authentication. There's SMS where if it's they just send you the code via text message, I would recommend using something higher than that. But using two-factor authentication in general is much better than not having anything else. Uh, don't reuse your passwords for all your accounts because mm. that's how most of these attacks happen where you know, some other website might be breached, but you use the same account uh, and password for your yep. Instagram and then they can just log in that way. Well, you said that there's a higher level of two-factor authentication. What yeah, so be? SMS is the lowest one because somebody can uh, get access to your text messages or something mm -hmm. like that, or they can just spoof that. The highest to me would probably be a security key, but no one really wants uh, to carry yeah. like yeah. the physical key around with them all the time. Right. Uh, you can use your Android phone as a security key for that too. Uh, if you have a phone that's Android 7 or above, which is uh, half of Android devices. Mm -hmm. And then there's like apps like Google Authenticator, which you can use that for. And... Um, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You think Apple, the Apple sign-in feature is gonna appear on Instagram? Then? You can't do single sign. You can't do single sign-on for Instagram. You can't do like uh, sign-in with Google for your Instagram account or anything got it. like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If Google doesn't have it, Apple definitely won't have it. Yeah. Either. Okay. The two factors are a necessary evil, but man, are they sometimes really annoying. They can I, I be, but you know, it's yeah, uh, it's sort of the reality that we live in now that like, if you if you really want to have some modicum of protection that is kind I'll of a baseline, this, there, yeah. baseline protection for and you. And it's not that point. hard because you do it like one time. Unless you have a new computer or a new phone, then you have to do it again. But like how often are you jumping onto a new device that you have to do it again? I'm doing it constantly. You're also a tech reporter yeah. like a new device like True. every week. I've gotten used to it. So yeah. That's my point that like I do it constantly and I still don't think it's that much of a hassle. I, yeah, it's, it's like about as annoying as putting a seatbelt on when you get in a car. Right. Like that's you a, don't want, like it's it's frustrating, but like you also don't want to die. That's a good analogy, but just from my own whiny perspective for two second first world problems, yeah. uh, I, I have about eight or nine cars that I have to drive here every day just running stuff here in the studio. True. So that gets annoying after a while. Yeah, I just, mean, and I understand it. Like people in security have been trying to get people to adopt two factor authentication for a really long oh, time. Yeah. Last year at a conference, somebody from Google had mentioned that only 10% of Gmail users Are use two-factor two authentication, yeah, yeah. which is really bad. Um, but at this, but like Google's been coming up with other ways to to verify like mm. accurate logins. That's why if like you log in on another device, you don't have two-factor authentication on. They'll send you an email saying like, "Hey, did oh, you yeah. just sign in?" Oh yeah. Like Instagram doesn't do that yet, or right, anything right. like that. So that's like important stuff. If people aren't using two-factor authentication, my argument is if they just put it on by default for everyone. They, like we wouldn't be where we are right now, but right. Uh, that's another argument. But they also don't want to like it's freak very out. inconvenient. It's <laughs> yeah, they don't want to freak out all the massive amount of users yeah. that don't really understand what it is. Which is probably most of them, if we're going to be. No, honest. it is. I mean, I, I just remember a few years back, uh, I was interviewed by uh, like a network producer about like security tips, and like I kept stressing to them two factor authentication. If you don't say anything else, if you don't include anything else from what I say, mm -hmm. at least the, include this bit about two factor authentication. And of course, that was cut. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's also why, like, um, these Nest cameras, like, you've been seeing all these stories about, like, Nest cameras getting hacked in yep. people's homes and broadcasting, like, oh, like, we're under attack from North Korea right. or something like that. Uh, it's the same thing. Like, Nest allows you to put on two-factor authentication, and people don't do it for a device that has a camera in their homes right. and a microphone. It's, yep. it's one of those things where it's, like, this is the obvious thing to do, but they're not putting it on by default because of like some convenience argument that they're making. Mm -hmm. Now, in true to fashion, uh, this is a case where the, the manufacturers have given you the opportunity to protect yourself and we're just too lazy to do it. So we're all to blame collectively. Yeah, you, can't, you can never underestimate laziness. Or they could just turn it on by default and make it a requirement to use it. They require you to make an account to use Nest. Why wouldn't they require you to put security features on? There you go. Because they're worried about the numbers that that would turn away out of that convenience factor. Yes. yes. For sure. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Ryan says, just added two-factor authentication to my Instagram account. Thanks, Alfred. Uh, Landon got back to us. He says uh, his buddy got the account back but didn't go super far as to change the email. Uh, they went and – hang on. I lost my, my window here. They went and sent DMs to his followers that had some kind of link in it but never clinked. Uh, I never clicked it because it sounded fishy. Like fishy Most of the scale. time, yeah. you got a good sixth sense about that. But yeah, that's yeah. Scary I mean, stuff. that's that's a common tactic. What they'll do is once they have access to that account, they'll send it to all their friends to try to get more people in, and then continue onward with that, and then spreading uh, you know more account takeovers. Right. 
so I'm going to get a little off topic, but only because our wallop kind of uh, sparked my my uh, memory here. He says, uh, was it hard to get back a Facebook account that was hacked too? Seems like they should have had a standard process across all of their platforms. Do we know anything about that before I go on to my little yeah, diatribe? Yeah, so the reason why they make it hard to recover accounts is so that like people that are malicious about it can't do the same thing to you. Mm. So around when uh, Facebook first started, or at least around when I first got on Facebook, their security measures for things like that were pretty like lackluster. So my friends and I did this like as pranks to each other where – we went with the account recovery process, but we were pretending to be like that Someone person. Else. So, yeah, like, yeah. My, and like the security, like they didn't have two factor on really then. So, the security measure was, you know, kind of what was still going on like now, where it's like, what city did you grow up in? Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. we would get access to that because uh, we knew that they grew up in New York because they're our friends. Right. Um, and then we'd just write that and they're like, okay, cool. We, here's, here's the recovery pass where we sent it to this email account. And then the email account that you could go on, like if we had access to the email account, then we could reset the password from there. Right. So yeah, we would get onto our friend's Facebook's account and like post like some dumb thing <laughs> on a, it. Who hasn't done that? But that's my point. Like you can't do that anymore. Like that's, they make the recovery process so hard because it's like to get, to stop malicious people from like mm. pretending to be you and saying like, hey, this is my account. I want it back. Right, right. Um, so that's why it's like so difficult to recover your account. But at the same time, if you are really trying to get your account back, I understand the struggles that you have to go through for that. For sure. Um, all right. So all I was going to go into is all of this conversation reminds me of uh, something I've had to deal with for in recent memory. So like my father passed away not you know some time ago, and Necessary Evil is dealing with online presence. And all mm -hmm. I can think of through all of this, like claiming ownership, retaining ownership, reclaiming it, whatever. Um, is very similar to the process of trying to take on uh, an account from a loved one who has passed on. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, Facebook was one of the most agreeable ones I had to deal with, at least as far as the claim and acquisition goes, um, mostly because their ultimate um, result was to be like, all right, we're going to sunset the account, make it like a memorial account kind of thing. Google was a nightmare. I wanted hmm. to try to get a hold of his Google account, his Gmail account, because he had credit card statements and stuff in there, and I had to deal with finances. And that was a friggin' nightmare to the extent where they were demanding court papers I could not attain myself, um, and that my uh, attorney was just like, don't even bother. Um, so to this date, I have not claimed that Google account, and it's going to let it go stale. Yeah, it's well, unfortunate that they made it so difficult for you, but I would argue in the same vein that that is another security measure. So like your the Facebook account, you know, there's not that much sensitive information there where if somebody had taken it over, okay. But with a, what you mentioned, you know, if you're with your father's Gmail account, it has these like bank statements, it has all mm -hmm. these like records that if somebody did try to trick Google with that without and just getting access to it, it'd be much, uh, you know, more detrimental if somebody had, had stolen access to right. that. Very true. And I do appreciate that for the most part. Uh, what it really kind of came down to is I spent almost four months going back and forth with them, continually obtaining new documentation and proof mm -hmm. and like the death certificate and all this stuff. I know this isn't Apple, this is completely different, but also not completely different as far as like getting ownership of an account back. And I finally got to a point where it's like, this is, this is a joke. I, I can't come up with any more information to prove to you that he's my dad and I should have control over this. So yeah. screw it. And that's wow. really whittled down to. Uh, we got just a couple minutes left, so let's go ahead and take uh, two more questions. Here's one from Yan. He says, just curious, do you guys play Dota or Dota 2? Uh, till today, I still don't know exactly who is the creator and who is Ice Frog. I have no idea what he's talking about. We did a really nice video on Dota. We did. And competitive gaming yeah, yeah. With, uh, with our old teammate, Mary and Joe. Uh, I'll try to put a, a link to that in the description later. Um, but yeah, that was the whole premise of that was like she went in knowing nothing about Dota and right. having a great time learning about it. So Yeah, no, she seemed to do a pretty okay job at the end i don't know i've never played dota so i can't really talk about it alfred are you a, a dota fan um my friends played a lot of it but i never really played it i played it like maybe once or twice in an internet cafe but i don't know yeah it's like yeah so dota if you're not familiar with it it started as like a just a game mo like mod for um warcraft 3 mm. and it was like a specific like mode in it that okay. you could play uh, that's different from like how Warcraft Three usually plays. Like you have like these heroes, and you're basing your army around that, yeah. And you're like defending this like tower or something like that. Um, 
played it for a really long time, and then they made Dota 2. I don't know if Blizzard's also behind that. Uh, let's see. Valve is behind it, so oh, no, not Blizzard. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But you, yeah. Roger. Sorry, we got we got nothing. I got nothing on Dota. Fair enough. All right, and our last question is coming in from old friend Timothy. Is there a way to log into your Facebook or Instagram using key FOB type of security? Google is yeah. using your cell phone to do that already. Yeah, you can you can use security keys for Facebook. I don't know if you can use security keys yet for Instagram because I tried setting it up and I don't think I can do that yet. Let me just double check right now. But yeah, they don't they don't do security keys for Instagram yet. But for Facebook, you can, and then you can use your Facebook to log into your uh, Instagram. Instagram account. Yeah. So that's one way to do it. But yeah, nothing for Instagram. I think mostly because you use your Instagram like on your phone most of the time, not on your desktop. And it's it's and kind they of redundant. They have a physical key. They, for the- they have Bluetooth um, security keys, and they also have NFC security keys, where you can just put it on the back of your phone. But that doesn't work for iOS. Mm. Um, and Bluetooth security keys aren't always the most reliable. So right. Yeah. For that, I would, like, for Instagram, I know that I use um, Google Authenticator. So instead of having the message sent to me and by SMS, I have it, like, on an app instead. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. Well, this has been a very educational episode. <laughs> I hope we've all learned something here today. Thanks, guys. Uh, and thanks, everyone, for putting up with this last week. I had to do an a whole equipment installation here in the studio as we ever kind of build things up here in New York. Uh, so we were kind of just down for the count for the week so thanks again for uh putting up with us in the weird summer schedule we've already had hopefully it levels off soon we'll time will tell uh but we're back for regular this week so we'll be back again tomorrow roger take us on out yeah the 359 is available on itunes tune in stitcher feedburner google play google Podcasts, the amazon echo and of course cnet.com we'll see you all tomorrow bye folks